Hey y'all, CB here at NBS Welding. Uh, next project we're getting into here, interestingly enough, is another seat. Seems like I haven't worked on any kind of a seat in the shop for as long as I can remember. And this is two in a row that has to do with seating of some sort or a chair. But uh, let's take a look at what we got here and I'll tell you a little bit on the story. This right here is a stadium seat. I'm sure you've seen these where you go into a, a, a ball game or a concert or a venue and the, the thing folds up. Uh, this is a stadium seat from the West Virginia University Coliseum. And a buddy of mine had uh, obtained this. Uh, I looked a little bit on the internet about the information of of these uh, these Coliseum seats, and what I found was that the seats were replaced in the Coliseum in in, in the West Virginia University Coliseum in 2020. And uh, what I read online said that if you were a season ticket holder, uh, they would sell you your seat for a hundred bucks. Uh, the other seats that weren't held by season ticket holders were for sale too for more money. But, um, however, my, my buddy obtained this one, he got it. And the thing about it is this is how they gave them to you. Just, uh, removed. They just unbolted the seat. Uh, if you look in the back here, you can see the bolts and there's an angle iron frame that those bolts are affixed to that's welded to this pipe frame that holds the plastic seat. So the way they sold these to the people that wanted them, uh, that's all you got. You can't sit in it. <laughs> it's just the seat. They just unbolted it and said, here, uh, you don't get any sort of framing. So. If you want to sit in this, obviously a set of some framing of some sort needs to be made. And that's where I come in. Uh, they got a hold of me to see if I would build a frame for it. And that's what we're going to do. So let's do it. Hey, y'all. CB here. The No BS Welder here at NBS Welding. I'm wanting to let y'all know. Uh, we got t-shirts for sales. Uh, if, if you'd like to support the NBS Welding YouTube channel, send Tina an email at nbswelding at aol.com. Uh, go to the NBS Welding YouTube channel. Check out the content. And in the, uh, in all new video descriptions, there's links to our Amazon storefront and our affiliates. So you can check out, uh, the products that I use and indoors. I reckon a reasonable way to get this started, I'm looking at this black chair, it's always in the shop, I call it the TIG chair, on the rare occasion that I get to sit down and weld something, that's the chair I sit in, uh, so I took some measurements on just the stance of that TIG chair, and I'm looking at this, uh, state, uh, this seat from the Coliseum, and uh, that bucket right there seemed to be about the right height, I've got it set up there, and come up with a little plan uh i drew that out here on the piece of aluminum and right here i'm trying to show you where i've used that layout to make some cuts in this tube and i didn't cut it all the way through and that's part of my plan of doing this uh and and part of what i'm showing you here is how i've said before on the channel how my saw only miters one way so you know in one way you can make your mark on the top and and like th that cut right there i had to make my mark on the bottom to you know so that the mark would be on the right place where the saw could cut it uh i know that's confusing for a lot of people i got a comment one guy said he couldn't understand that at all but uh the miter saws that i have for metal only go one way they don't go both directions like a miter saw for wood um, and I'm trying to show you here that I've, I've cut it, but I've just cut into it a little bit. And, uh, if it was steel, I wouldn't be doing that, but I have to polish this aluminum and I'm going to be sanding and cleaning it up. So that's part of my plan 
is to uh, make the cut into there a little bit. And now I'm laying out the holes that need to be in this uh, piece of tube for the seat to bolt to. And I'm going to go ahead and drill those holes before I cut it all the way off. And uh, that's another part of my plan to have that done. Now I'm going to use the DA and shine this aluminum up and get it get it in pretty good shape. I can always go back and do a little touch up. But you can see how if these were individual pieces, this sanding that I'm doing right now would be a lot harder to do. Uh, the fact that I've been able to do some of the work and then polish and then do some more of the work. That's going to work out a lot better for me. And here, uh, this shrink wrap's another thing you can find on my, on my Amazon uh, storefront. There's a link in the description of my videos to take you to my Amazon storefront. But uh, I put that plastic on there and you can see why. I don't want to scratch this aluminum in the saw if I can help it. So having that plastic on there, that helped... Uh, preserve it somewhat and, and and keep me from scratching it up uh, in the in the in the sawing part then i can put it on my layout i take my favorite uh ac tig machine the arc captain tig 200p and go to putting this baby together uh using the layout i set the pieces on there i'm using some clamps and uh you know, this is an occasion where I got to stand up and TIG weld. Uh, seems like I always see there's so many people on YouTube. Uh, you know, they they're they're doing videos and stuff of uh, TIG welding, and they're almost always like perfectly setting at a table in a chair, and and the the piece is like right in front of them, and it's. You know, it's where they can move it where they want it. And I just, I think about that a lot because it's just not reality. It's just not reality. It's, you, you don't get to do that that much. Sometimes you got to stand up. Sometimes you got to reach around. I mean, it's, it's just, it's not always like that. So, uh, I got this put together and I was kind of trying to make this part, uh, my vision for this was to have that part kind of looking like uh like the basket you know at, at uh, of a basketball court um so i got that tigged up and and the next thing is cutting these miters uh on uh some more tubing that i'd shined up uh and i'm mitering all of these 45 degrees because now i'm making my uh i guess i want to call it the half court uh it's my base the the base for the seat you know the I, i've decided that this is about the size that it needs for its stance you know in order for it to to be stable enough and uh so the next thing uh I, i've marked out here uh is kind of what I, what would be i guess i'm i'm going to call this the the free throw lane <laughs> You know, I, I've made some marks, and, and you can see me using the jigsaw, and I, I try to remind people. One nice thing about aluminum, you, you can use your woodworking tool, tools on aluminum. So that's something you can take advantage of. And uh, so my free throw lane, uh, it's going in the break and getting a couple bends put in it uh, to stiffen it up. And I, yeah, I think it looks real nice. And you can see... It's kind of like my vision starting to come together here. It's like a half a basketball court, you know, that I'm trying to make. And one of the things I noticed when I fit this up was that uh, the radius of that tubing makes it so that it doesn't press in tight uh, like, I, like I would normally want it to. And I think if this were steel and I was going to MIG weld it, that wouldn't be an issue. But the fact that we're TIG welding some aluminum here uh it's a different thing so i've got the death wheel uh and i did some notching with it and you can see what i ended up with now is uh a lot better fit you know that top section right there if i hadn't coped this like this that top section right there 
I would have quite a gap, uh, an undesirable sized gap for, for this type of welding. And, uh, what I guess I want to show you with this clip right here, I'm doing something right here that I call getting cocked. And as you learn to weld, this is something you really need to learn to do. Uh, I'm making myself in a position so that I'll be comfortable at the end of the weld. And I really want you guys that are learning to weld to think about that. Don't make yourself comfortable at the beginning. You know, you're not tired when you start welding. You're tired after you've welded a long ways. So you want to, when I say get cocked to make a weld, if you want to make a weld that's long, make sure you're going to be comfortable at the end of that when you're tired. Even if it makes you a little uncomfortable when you start welding. And that's a really good thing to think about. Uh, so putting these pieces together, I really don't, uh, you know, a spool gun makes a hell of a mess on aluminum. I, I like to use a spool gun on certain jobs, but, you know, I didn't really want to spool gun any of this. Uh, the reason I'm spool gunning here is just to get some tacks. And you can see how I use those levels to, uh, you know, I had a two foot level on the base. I had a torpedo level on the, the other part. And I just, I use those levels to get that. Uh, put together where everything's straight and then I thought you know the next thing to get this ready for clear coat is I, I signed it and dated the bottom and uh, I got a really nice decal that my buddy made for me for this and we're gonna put that on right here uh, for the West Virginia Mountaineers and I'm uh I'm spraying clear coat, and I, I usually come into the break room, and I'll set the timer on the stove during uh, the the in between coats. And uh, this is the Redmond's real salt that I use. This comes from out west. This salt's not polluted like the like the salt from uh, from seawater. It doesn't have all the nanoplastics. And people will tell you, people tell you, been telling me forever how salt's bad for you. I'll tell you what I think of that. Salt's a necessary, uh, uh, that sodium, good quality sodium, uh, that's a necessary electrolyte that you need. And uh, you'll find that Redmond sea salt on my Amazon storefront. Hey y'all, CB here, the no BS welder here at NBS Welding. I'm wanting to let y'all know uh, we got t-shirts for sales. Uh, if, if you'd like to support the NBS Welding YouTube channel, Send Tina an email at nbswelding at aol.com. Uh, go to the NBS Welding YouTube channel. Check out the content. And in, the, uh, in all new video descriptions, there's links to our Amazon storefront and our affiliates. So you can check out uh, the products that I use and endorse. Got some bonus footage from my buddy of the Coliseum seat. 
uh, in its spot where he's going to keep it. And uh, what's really cool is that piece of turf that it's sitting on right there is actually from Mountaineer Fields. So that's another little piece of memorabilia he's got. And he's real happy with the uh, with the seat mount, and uh, that's great. Uh, I love it.